we are honored to have with us this afternoon um, a friend and a very famous director, Mark Neely. Mark? Yes. Hi. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, game. So, ano na tayo? Start na tayo. So, ang haba ng intro. Meron pa naman akong prepare na intro for myself, but... Uh, oh, anyway. you <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's gonna be one slide, so and uh, all right. Papa na ano, biography of my film, event, uh, ano, a, a film about my life. But anyway, do you have that? No, do you have the screen now? There. Okay, yeah, na? we can see it. Yes. Okay. So we're here today, today to talk about the power of stories in change making. So we have a very powerful uh, picture, and as they say, a picture. Uh, that's a thousand words. So, my name is Mark Mealy. So I was born in Makati, Rizal. Take note, no time na I was born, it was still called Rizal and not Metro Manila. So, you can guess how old I am. I attended the UP College of Fine Arts uh, because I wanted to be an animator. And then, uh, midway through the program, I realized that parang mechanical yung work na isang animator. So, uh, I was able to discover uh, feature filmmaking or uh, live action filmmaking and uh, eventually with the short film that I made I was able to get a scholarship uh, to study filmmaking in Paris uh, when I got back to the Philippines I started directing TV commercials and uh, but for me uh, the stories that you tell in advertising is, is not as fulfilling as you were hoping you hoped it would be uh, and it's not as uh, challenging, I guess. So I started studying script writing. So I thought, you know, when you go to, to film school and when you go to, to learn uh, how to make short films, you'll be able to be, uh, you know, you're able to, to write a screenplay or to tell a story. But apparently, it's, it's more than that. So you have, I dug deeper and uh, learned script writing. Fortunately, the first script I wrote, won me a uh, Palanca Prize. Uh, that entry to, to the Palanca was my ticket that I showed eventually to my uh, producer and that film became Crying Ladies, a film that I made in 2003. Uh, it won Best Picture uh, along with other awards uh, at the Mentor from Manila Film Festival. It also won uh, awards from the Orian, uh, FAMAS, uh, Film Academy of uh, Film Academy the Philippines. But it was also the uh, Philippine entry to the uh, Best Foreign Language category at the Oscars. Uh, we were not nominated, but we got the news that we were part of parang the top 10. Uh, unfortunately, they only choose five. So, but the fact that we were top 10 is, is okay already. Uh, and then uh, I wrote and directed, the, well, I uh, co-wrote and directed the Baler. Uh, and then I, my first, you know, uh, teaching stint was in the Assumption College and then joined the uh, Benil and then studied digital film, uh, digital management at Hyper Island. And then, of course, eventually, uh, after a few years, went to San Francisco, went back to the Philippines. Exacto, exacto, when I went back to the Philippines, COVID-19 happened and I'm, uh, I'm fortunate to be stuck here because parang being here in the Philippines at home made me reflect on a lot of things. And that is the purpose of my, my purpose in life. No? So I'm very lucky because uh, most of my life uh, has been about storytelling. So whether it's advertising, whether it's uh, uh, film, whether it's teaching, you know, uh, I also do woodworking. So, para everything that I do, I design T-shirts, I design logos. So, everything that I do is about is about storytelling, and uh, and it 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 always involves you know all these uh, elements that that make up a good story. And then I was so uh, I was so obsessed with with uh, with uh, with that. Uh, past with that uh, purpose in life, no. That it, when my my daughter, na uh, I mis uh, made a mistake uh, when she was sixteen. Sabi niya, Dad, I wanna have a tattoo. 
I said, okay, you can only have a tattoo when you're turned 18. And then uh, I forgot all about it. And when she turned 18, the first thing that she tells me is, Dad, I'm going to have my tattoo. But Samia, to make me feel better now, uh, I, can, uh, I can choose the design of the tattoo. So I said, okay, sige. So pareho kami magkakaroon. So yung tattoo na design sa kanya is the same tattoo that I would have. So this is the tattoo design that we have. Okay. Uh, it's called Dico Fabulas. Okay. In Latin, it means I tell stories. So parang it's something that's supposed to remind me of, I guess, my purpose in life no? is to tell stories. So whether it's teaching, it's making films, uh, it's carpentry, it's uh, fixing the house, it's about telling a story. So enough about my uh, midlife crisis, but my cool purpose. So uh, I'd like to uh, invite you to go back to your past and just try to remember what was your first story? What is that memorable story that, uh, that you know, uh, that stuck on you, uh, that you remember so well? My story was uh, Pinocchio. And, uh, uh, and I remember it because everything that Pinocchio was, and the siyempre, English, no? I was a ko when I was a boy. So, parang, you know, it's animation. So, you discover a familiar wor a world. You meet a hero, a little boy, Pinocchio, just like me. Tapos, there's a problem na, ano, na gusto niya lumabas, gusto niya ma-experience yung world, which is what I wanted to, to be like. Which is why what I wanted to do when I was young. And then, you know, there's a problem. Tapos, uh, you know, na, uh, he wanted to be a boy. That was his goal. Tapos, uh, and then, ang ano niya, uh, after the movie, the lesson that, that keeps popping on my mind was, paulit-ulit sa akin sabi na nanay ko, never tell a lie, never tell a lie. Because what would happen if you tell a lie? Your nose will grow long. So, takot-takot ko nun. For the next three years, hindi ako naglalay. <laughs> but after three years, hindi pa rin naman ako naglalay. Kaya lang, ano, alam ko na na hindi naman nangyayari yun. But anyway, uh, these are the things that happen when you discover a story. You, know, you think of solutions and even realize they might not be a solution. Lagi yung problem ng, ng lead character. Uh, and then uh, the hero overcomes the challenge and gets a reward. Okay, so, and then sometimes, and as we go on with life, uh, when we face problems, sometimes we ask ourselves, so what would our hero do? When, when, you know, if, 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 it, if this problem happened to my hero, what would he have done? Okay. So these are the things that, that, I know, parang we always, that's, and that's why it's a good thing that we have uh, our, our alter ego or a hero that we identify ourselves with uh, when we began this, uh, this session. So just remember what was that uh, first story that, that, uh, that, that struck you when you were young. And then what were the lessons and the, the world that was introduced to you? Uh, a few years after I started directing a, a uh, Crying Ladies, my first film, uh, I was invited to direct a, a film about a city, a, a small town in fact. Uh, no time na yon, a lot of people thought that that town was in the south of the Philippines. So they thought it was part of, uh, of uh, uh, Baler, Quezon. So if you remember, yung merong old, ano no, old bus terminal called BLTB. No? Uh, it's Batangas, Laguna, Tayabas, uh, forgot what the other, bus company, okay, so BLTB. Uh, and the town was only known for two things, the big waves, okay, Na when they shot the film Apocalypse Now in the Philippines, uh, they wanted a lo location that is so remote, pero malalaki yung wave. So, ano, so the, the cast and crew of, uh, of, uh, of Apocalypse Now introduced surfing in that area. And this was the uh, late 70s. Uh, and, and so yung one of the senators at that time who came from that town, Ed Angara, uh, hills from Baler, 
and he said they wanted to make a movie about uh, about Baler, the story of Baler. Because nobody knew that time where Baler was. So much less what can they do in Baler. Now what's, what's exciting about Baler? Uh, the only thing that they have is big waves for surfing and an old church. And I remember I, I actually found my way to go and, and ask Senator Angara, can I be the one to direct this film? Because when I went to Baler in the early 80s, uh, I remember, uh, I thought it was the, the land that time forgot. Tapos, ano, uh, and then, uh, sobra siyang liblib. And then, but I saw the story on the plaque uh, in front of the church. So it was the story of uh, the Baler Church. And then, uh, what I did was I, I tried to write uh, together with the screenwriter, si Roy Iglesias, uh, a movie, a, a story, the story of the people inside the church, but told from the story of a Filipino. In the past, there was one film, it was shot in 1948, in fact, uh, about the story of Baler. But it was so, in a way, so, kumbaga, it had an unfair depiction of the Filipinos. No? Medyo, ano tayo, at civilized and uh, uneducated, uh, which was not the case no, then. So, parang, what, was the Filip- what were the Filipinos thinking when the events or the siege in Baler happened? And that became the film. Uh, called Baler. No? So, uh, because of this film, it, the film won several awards. Uh, it also won the picture of the Metro Manila Film Festival. It, it was shown in other countries. Uh, it was shown in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. And then, uh, what, what is even more interesting is what happened to Baler after the movie was, was shown. Uh, it transformed a the whole the whole town the whole uh the whole community so now surfing is very big there and everybody who visits Baler would visit the museum so they begin to understand the history and and the uh, and the uh, culture of the peop- of the people who live in that area and also the event in that film and uh, and through this fi- uh, through through this movie it also inspired uh, the Spanish filmmakers to again retell their own version or their own point of view of, of the story. So in 2016, they came up with 1898, Los Ultimos de Filipinas. And then the, they also have another, so parang nagkaroon ng, ano, nagkaroon ng uh, surge again of interest on what happened in, in the story of Baler. Uh, all because in 2008, we started a film uh, that reminded people. So we did not tell something new. We just reminded people of, this is the story of the people of Baler. Uh, there's a TV series called Ministerio del, del Tiempo, which is it's like the Doctor Who version of Spain. And Salang, the, the, the story about that is, they, what would they do if they can re, uh, rewrite history? So ito yung, ano, yung parang. And then for them, because the Philippines was the last, uh, Spanish colony that they have to give up. So very, very significant yung, ano, yung, yung uh, it, it showed the, the, the power of, of what, how, uh, what happened to, to Spain eventually. So it's, it's an example of how a story has changed a community and inspired other stories also to, to be written about it. Other films happened, other stories happened. There's a film called Apocalypse Child. Uh, I think about three more films, feature films, were were also written and produced and all set in uh, in uh, in Baler. So I'd like to tell you another story. Uh, this time, something more, uh, something that started out as a tra- tragedy, uh, and how the story of that people uh, again also transformed their their lives, their community. So in 2011, the tsunami hit Ishinomaki, which is a part of the uh, a prefecture uh, northeast of, uh, of Tokyo. Uh, and then a lot of people, of course, perished. And then many buildings, uh, uh, many buildings were destroyed. Many lives were destroyed. 
and then one of the 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 designers who who hailed from from Ishinomaki uh, thought about what can we do to rebuild uh, the community. So if you see what Ishinomaki uh, at least yung, yung remnants ng what happened to Ishinomaki and Fukushima it was just so so sad. Uh, but what an Ishinomaki designer did uh, is to he thought about what would make people be together again and, and form a community in the midst of this, uh, in this tragedy. So he designed something very, very simple. Uh, it's actually a bench. So it's the bench on the lab. So it's called the Ishinomaki bench. Okay. Uh, and some of you probably have uh, experienced this. Ishinomaki lab. Uh, designers and people, they went to the College of St. Benilde uh, and also helped uh, help the community around Benilde. Uh, and let's, let's, let's try to rebuild uh, this community by just building benches, okay? For them, the, the principle of the bench is very simple. You, a bench is a furniture that brings people together. So, you know, para bang Kung meron tatlo o apat na tao, they can sit down, uh, sit on a bench, and then, you know, socialize, be together, uh, create a community. So, they started building these benches, and then they gave also the designs to, to other people. And then, through the scrap wood that they've gathered, they were able to unite all the people uh, in the town of Ishinomaki. And so, you know, when, when they were trying to rebuild the city, they would all at night gather for meals, all sitting in this bench. Uh, they would watch movies. Uh, they would project uh, movies on on uh, on, a, on a park on the screen uh, exteriors. Uh, all sitting sitting on a bench. So, parang for them, it was that the story of th what happened to their community and how they rebuilt themselves uh, was told using a bench. You know? So I think this is one, one power of that story and the bench to transform whatever happened to uh, Ishin and what happened to Ishinomaki eventually. So now Ishinomaki is not just a town uh, that was affected by the tsunami, but it was a town that is now thriving because of, uh, of a design community that they have created. And so they have also uh, storerooms in, uh, uh, sorry, store. Uh, 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 showrooms in, in Tokyo. But what happens naman if a story that are supposed to be told by the people in that community are not told and instead ang magkikwento or the storyteller will be somebody else. Somebody who does not take uh, who, who does not own a stake in that community. So, uh, a few years ago, my, uh, one of our friends, and then also uh, 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 High Five, uh, she was invited to design a poster for the Department of Interior and Local Government. Uh, this is not the poster, but the poster is something similar to this. Sabi nung uh, undersecretary or uh, one of the sector, one of the staff of uh, of uh, DILG, they said, "Can you design uh, us a poster on what people should do during the evacuations? Uh, sorry, during evacuation when a typhoon comes." And she asked, uh, "Have you designed other posters?" Oh yeah, we've designed so many posters in the past, but the problem that uh, we see in arises is that when people are evacuated, they go to the evacuation site and then they, uh, some of them, especially the men, they leave the evacuation center, go back to their houses, go back to their uh, fields, their rice fields, and try to gather or try to tie the house down, uh, secure it, uh, take whatever they can 
and try to go back to the evacuation center. So more often than not, uh, uh, they get sweep, uh, swept away. They they get injured, and a lot actually a lot of people a lot of them die. So the problem that the DILG is seeing, or the story that they are seeing from what is happening, is that the people uh, in the communities do not understand what's in the poster, what's what is written in the posters. This is an example of of that you know, disaster preparedness poster. Una una, it's in English, okay? Uh, and then, oh, it, it's very, it's very broad, it's very, but anyway, it's, it's also detailed. So, my friend uh, asked, maybe before we design the poster, let's, let's go to the communities and ask people uh, what part of the poster are they not understanding that a lot of them, especially, uh, especially men, okay, they, they still go back and end up you know, losing their lives or getting injured uh, because they do not follow the evacuation procedures. So when they ask, they ask, are you familiar with the uh, DILG posters on evacuation? All of them said yes. Are you familiar with what is written there? So all of them said yes. Do you know where they are located? And then can you tell them? So the, when they were asked, all of them even uh, recounted and listed, them, oh, this is what the poster says, so, 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 and so. And then the, uh, and then the interviewer from DILG asked, so if they understand what, if you understand what is in the posters, how come may hindi pa rin sumusunod? How come? a few people follow. Sabi nung, nung wives, sabi nung people na in-interview nila. So, naintindihan po namin eh. Ang problema ho kasi, everything's been being taken care of when we are at the evacuation center. During the typhoon. During the floods. But when we go back to our homes, when we go back to our rice fields, wala na ho yung bahay namin. Wala na yung rice fields. Wala na yung animals. Sir, mas malala pa ho. Para nyo na rin kami pinatay. So the problem of the community is not that they do not understand the posters. The problem is what the government has allocated for them covers only what happens during a typhoon. But after the typhoon, Bahala na kayo sa buhay niyo. So, they came up, my friend and, uh, and, uh, and her teammate, uh, another, another ex-Hi-Fi, uh, another uh, mentor from Hi-Fi, uh, came up with solution. So, it's microloans. You know, it only cost 70,000 pesos uh, per house to be rebuilt. So, if, do you need, if your house gets destroyed by floods, you can get a loan for uh, as much as 70000 and rebuild your house. You can have a, a depository for your animals during the flood. So they came up with so many solutions. But their solution was not a poster. Nagalit yung DILG. Sabi yung DILG, hindi, ang hinihingi lang naman namin sa inyo, posters. So tinanong ng friend ko, uh, how would you know if your project or your campaign is a success. What is your measure? And the people from the DILG said, oh, we measure it by the number of posters we distribute. So if they distributed like 20,000 posters this year and then last year was only 18,000, for them it is successful. But my, my friend said, hindi ba dapat pag before maraming namamatay na tao and this year walang namamatay na tao that would have been the perfect measure so for for the DILG they were just looking at the posters so this is the problem when somebody who is not a stakeholder tells the story so for them the story of the people of the communities living in the in the, the typhoon areas is that they do not understand what's in the poster 
and the problem is how the poster was designed. But actually, that is not the, the, the problem. So this is the, the perils, the price of having other people, non-stakeholders, tell, uh, tell your story. Uh, this is a research that we did uh, a few years back. Uh, this is actually my thesis for for my uh, for my master's program. Uh, it's about uh, single-use plastics and the way they are polluting the oceans. And the Philippines, uh, unfortunately, is the uh, number three uh, in the world. No? So, kung may, may bronze medal or med medal lang, ano, nasa bronze medal na tayo. So, countries polluting uh, the oceans the most. No? So, the Philippines is number three. And it's all because of our dependency on single-use plastics or sachets. No? So, the, you know, we want, it's, it's a global problem. We want to, to solve that problem. The quick and easy way of solving this problem is uh, very simple. You know, stop using single-use plastics or stop using sachets, you know, so shampoo, coffee. Uh, I realize actually everything that is in the uh, Sari Sari store has a sachet component or are packed in, in sachets, so candies, gelatin, milk. Uh, detergent, everything comes in sachets. And that's no wonder why the Philippines is so dependent on sachets. So, uh, in other countries, uh, Great Britain, for example, they, they came up with uh, refilling stash, uh, stations. Uh, this company, uh, Splosh, uh, refills, it's, a, it's on a subscription basis. It, it, it will refill uh, detergents, dishwashing paste, soaps, uh, shampoos, whatever you need. Okay, and this and on the left is an example of another, another um, uh, store that is a refilling station in in other countries. So, but these are countries that do not belong to that uh, list of ocean polluters. Uh, but they're doing their part on how to not be dependent on on single use plastics. So in the Philippines. Uh, in Makati specifically, there's this store uh, that also is a refilling station, and they, you know, they, for them this is this is a nice way of uh, trying to solve that problem of dependency on single-use plastics. So you come there, bring your own container, bring your own plastic bottle or your glass bottle, and then we will refill it with whatever you need. Okay. And then one of the largest manufacturers of soap and shampoo, Unilever, uh, also opened in Makati, in one of the malls, uh, refillery. Uh, so they, you know, they came up with their own, bring your own bottle, we will refill it, and then you just pay a smaller price, uh, and then it's, it's good to go, you know. It's in place in a nice part, nice area of Glorieta. But I hope you're seeing another example of this is what happens when the people telling that story on how we can solve the problem of, of ocean pollution is not a stakeholder. The problem here is that the people who use sachets sachet shampoo, sachet milk, sachet conditioner are not people who go to the supermarket. They do not live in San Lorenzo Village or Alabang. They do not live in a subdivision. Uh, and much less, they do not go to malls like Glorieta or, or Greenbelt. So parang it's it's not sync. Uh, it's weird. It's it seems to be the right solution, but it's not the right solution. Because it's talking to a wrong 
audience. Okay, it's talking to our wrong people. The people that use single-use plastics do not go to malls. Conversely, the people who would be refilling their their uh, shampoos uh, using a refilling station uh, are able to buy shampoos not in a single-use plastic but in bottles. No? So the, the solution actually is to go to the center of commerce that is closest to them, the Sari Sari store. A team profile, this is the story, this is the Bida, this is the hero of a sachet user. No? He or she earns only 512 pesos, minimum wage. And they get salary only once a week. If you compare that to a an average shampoo bottle costing 170 pesos versus a sachet of shampoo, which is only 9 pesos, it's more practical for them to buy sachet because it's only 9 pesos and they will only get their salary once a week. Okay, And they buy their supplies to somewhere that is closest to their house. Kahit na naka-brief sila or naka-short sila or naka-tuala lang sila, they could just, you know, pabili nga lang sa shade. Shoo, takbo. Balik doon sa, balik doon sa bathroom and then take a shower. Okay? Uh, so we thought about, why not instead bring the refilling station to the closest center of commerce? Not to a mall, but to a sari-sari store. And true enough, uh, this was my proposal. Instead of using, kasi ang, in my study, Many people will not buy a glamour product if it's tackal version, no? something like na ano, na refilling, na parang parang mantika or cooking oil or vinegar or toyo, like in the in the market that you could you know uh, bring your own container. But if it's in a vendo machine, in a nice vendo machine like this, the meron mga screen graphics and everything, then it's something that they could use. Uh, later on in my research, I was able to. Uh, discover a company in Chile called Algramo and they were also doing exactly the same thing and they were doing it to the equivalent of the Sari Sari store or the mini grocery in the poor in the poorest community and they are a very successful uh, company right now so this it is a perfect example of somebody who sees the problem who sees the story from the perspective of the characters in the story. So you, I'm not telling a story, uh, kumbaga, sorry, this story is told from somebody who knows what it is like to use shampoo or to use uh, detergent uh, in the most convenient way, which is single use plastics. And they want to avoid that, so they have the, the refilling station instead uh, in, uh, in the, their own version of the Sari Sari story. So it's very important, you know, to, to identify from whose perspective is the story being told. Because if you let other people, non-stakeholders, people who have nothing to lose uh, in, in doing so, uh, then they cannot really solve the problems. So the characters, on, on, any, on any story, on any movie, put there a character na walang mawawala sa kanya if they don't solve the problem, then hindi siya yung dapat mag-solve ng problem. Hindi siya yung dapat yung, yung hero. Okay? It should be the stakeholders. Somebody who will lose a lot uh, if they do not solve the problem. So this is a typical layout of a, you know, a typical structure for a story. So you have heroine, the heroine here or the hero. You know, the, he, he or she will face so many, so many challenges or so many conflicts uh, along the way, okay? And then there's always something at stake. Now, there was a goal eventually that he wanted to or she wanted to to pursue, okay? And very important, in a whole story, dapat meron parang there's this manager or this, this storyteller whose point of view is it that's being told, okay? So, she nakakakita nung, nung the whole omniscient perspective of how the story will flow. Uh, and you know the, the, the structure of any story uh, has been codified no? this is one, one of the versions no? so Aristotle uh, from Greece uh, created the, the structure of western drama that we use now and even in, 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 uh, in Hollywood movies and Filipino movies it's very Aristotelian in a way and then uh, this is the one that was designed by a, an author and an uh, anthropologist 
called uh, Joseph Campbell. So everything that you see here, part by part, no, starting from the blue part, so ordinary word, it's about everything seems to be okay naman with the world that they live in. Everything is normal. But then something happens, you know, like a realization that we do not live in this real world, but we are actually living inside a computer and everything that we have or we see right now or experience are only happening in our mind the matrix okay. or you know uh everything is normal but then suddenly uh, two robots come to me and tell and, and project a, an image of a princess saying that the world might seem normal but we are actually under attack right now by uh, an imperial force so we want you to help us save the world and a call to adventure. It's a story of Star Wars, of course. And every hero, if you look at it, will always refuse. But then thought about it, meets a mentor, meets a wise man. Uh, so it could be an Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, it could be Dumbledore, and so on. So he will pursue uh, all across that the different uh, stages of that journey no? so there will be tests there will be allies there will be enemies uh, and then towards the end the most difficult uh, challenge was going to happen so the biggest battle the climax of the story and then he overcomes that that becomes the reward he or she comes back home uh, with atonement and with something wiser uh, gained wisdom, changed his or her way of, uh, of thinking, uh, her, her life of, uh, her view of life, and then goes back to the world that he or she originated. Okay, so it's a typical hero's journey. Everything in life or everything even in business or in, in problems that you're trying to solve also has this story, also has this. None of us would want to save the world on our own, but sometimes we're the only ones who can actually do it. Okay, so we refuse, but yet somebody gives us an advice and say, Kaya mo yan. just do it. Help save, you know, help save or help us solve this problem uh, in a community. So all of us, if we are a stakeholder or we are part of that community, can also become a hero. And in fact, uh, if, if you look at the six uh, well, there here is an example of six popular movies, no? Uh, six popular movies and uh, uh, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Matrix, Spider-Man, Lion King. So all of them, if you look at it, has the same ordinary world, call to adventure, uh, refusal to call. So any stages that was presented earlier on, uh, same thing. They, they, they also have it, okay? So it's very important to follow the journey and make your audience identify themselves as the hero or one of the heroes uh, of that story. So everything that, 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 that we do, uh, especially in our community, uh, can do that, uh, should, should do that, okay? Uh, so before, before we, we take a big, brief break, uh, I'd like to invite you, okay, if, to be a character in a story, okay? So let's reimagine uh, re -imagine this, this, uh, this challenge. No? How would you clean Manila Bay if, if you are a character in the story? So you could be know, the mayor, you could be a city engineer, you could be a, uh, a designer, could be an architect. You could be a pe person living in one of the communities uh, near Manila Bay uh, or the tributaries of Manila Bay. Uh, how would you imagine or how can you reimagine cleaning up Manila Bay? Okay, so I'd like you to post your suggestions on the chat box, on the, the chat. Uh, if money is no problem, okay. So, for example, we will be getting a loan from, uh, naman China, but we'll be getting a loan, uh, billions of dollars to help clean up Manila Bay, okay. How, if you're one of the characters of one of the stakeholders, uh, of this community, how would you 
clean up. Um, how, what would you suggest we should do to clean up Manila Bay? So you have to trace the journey. You have to follow the journey. Uh, where is this happening? Okay. So let's do that for uh, three minutes. If you want to have a break, uh, go to the, to the restroom for a while. Uh, maybe we could play music uh, or something while this is happening. But anyway, just, just, to, just, just post your suggestions on the chat, chat box. And then uh, let's do that for, for three minutes. And then those who need to take a break, uh, you could take a break. All right. So I turn you over first to, to LA, to our host. And see, are we okay? We're good, we're good. Dance break, stand up break, see our break. One of the solutions would be to put white sand. <laughs> I hope no one did that. <laughs> and the, who, who would be the character of a story who puts white sand? Mark. <laughs> the villain. Uh, uh, I own Boracay. I own an island. Yeah, I'll share I lots of sand. I'll share it with you. A dolomite uh, <laughs> quarry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can. You're free to read the comments in the chat box. Too interesting. I like the violin. I know. Morning star pa naman siya. Alex, push someone and let them swim so they'll understand the real status of Manila Bay. Kidding daw. Abi, ano, uh, one of my examples is ano, uh, that place in Korea. Chengye oh yeah, my favorite. The park, the linear park. And for everyone's uh, information, the linear park in in Korea is the aspiration of the the estero in in yeah. the Benilde okay. area. Tripa de Galina could be a linear park, a contributory to Pasig River, which somebody spoke about, and comes out of the Manila Bay. A minute. Yep. Oh, I want to remind everyone if you have your questions already, you could start chatting them and um, Hi Fi team, Hi Fi superheroes will harvest and we'll ask them later. And maybe we would want to hear your voice. We could actually ask you to be the one to ask your question to Director Mark Maley. Okay. Yeah, we now? we're good. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting uh, uh, suggestion. So understand first the water system. Very good. That makes Manila Bay, Pasig River, uh, a lot of similar. Uh, maybe like clean, uh, like many clean. Who, person who likes to clean, decides clean Manila Bay on their lonesome very tedious, very hard, but just. Does its cause and shares. Load leaders on a boat from path for passing Manila Bay cruise. Okay. I agree with Dennis says it's actually my thesis in college. Yeah, filter, passing river. Assuming that administration has clean has been cleaned first, uh, I would have inmates specific, uh, clean it regularly, perhaps by month as part of the rehabilitation. Very interesting. And actually, if you think about it, uh, very doable uh, suggestions. 
like better implementation of solid waste collection systems in all uh, LGUs whose waste flow into Manila Bay. All right, let me share uh, my screen back. Okay. Um, wonderful suggestions. Uh, I am surprised, or maybe not surprised, that none of you suggested putting white sand on Manila Bay. Uh, because we all know that that is not the solution because it is a cosmetic solution. It is a, a solution that is not from a stakeholder, okay? So uh, this is Manila Bay right now. Uh, if you go, go past exit uh, Corregidor Island and in Bataan, uh, it's going to be the, the West Philippine Sea already. And if you think about, if you look at the, all the, the populated parts of Metro Manila are on the eastern side. Uh, and you're right, you know, very, very, very interesting. The root cause of the problem is not Manila Bay. The root cause of the problem are the tributaries, so the Estero de San Palo, Estero de Aviles. These are all exit points where storm water that actually carries trash are pushed towards Pasig River and end up in Manila Bay. So no matter how far from north to south you clean Manila Bay, it's not gonna clean the water, it's not gonna clean Manila Bay because the problem is not the sand, the problem is all of these tributaries that contribute to the pollution of Manila Bay. So very interesting. And, and it's very, and it's nice that you, you understand how literally the journey flows uh, in, in, in addressing this problem, trying to solve this, this uh, challenge, okay? This is an example of what happens if, if the stakeholders try to see, okay? And, and, and try to solve the problem. This is, an area, the one on your left is, is this uh, uh, what, what the Han River uh, in Seoul looked like, okay? It was also filled with people, uh, informal settlers. They were also throwing their trash uh, on that river there. This is the river now on your, uh, on your right side, okay? If you clean it, it's, you know, you can see actually people, uh, although they don't allow it, but actual people uh, wash their feet, and take a bath and uh, and, and just you know enjoy uh, the the flow of the river. It's exactly the same river that they just the skin. A similar project is being done right now in Iloilo, uh, in the Esplanade. So it's not impossible to solve this problem. The challenge is is big, but if you get the right people, the right stakeholders, and you know find the real story. And the main story that we're trying to tell, uh, in, or what's the problem, what are the challenges that we are trying to solve? Instead of asking somebody to imagine, imagine mo, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? And imagine mo, what is the solution? If they do not live that part, if they do not live that character, if they do not live in that milieu, they will never be able to solve the problem. Okay. Uh, Again, let's go back. Reimagining, reimagining an old story. Uh, these are three big uh, uh, industries right now. Uh, the restaurant industry, the school or education industries, uh, industry, uh, the movie industry. Uh, if you ask a restaurateur, okay, what your, your business is, he will say, oh, the restaurant business is the food business. If you ask a uh, school owner, uh, what is your business? This, the, my, my business is the education business. If you ask a, uh, a theater owner, what is your business? It's movies, it's an entertainment business, okay? So it's food, education, entertainment, okay? These are things that uh, people will always need throughout their lives, whatever happens. Uh, Kay bumagyo, kay ano, magkaroon ng, 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 ng hirap at ginhawa, 
we will always need food. We will always need education. We still will always need to be entertained. Okay? But here's the thing. When COVID-19 happened, these three industries, the restaurant industry, the school industry, and the movie industry are greatly affected. They've laid off a lot of uh, uh, jobs. Uh, a lot of restaurants have closed down. If there are at least right now are struggling, okay? So if we ask, if, if food, education, and entertainment are, are uh, essential businesses are essential uh, industries. Why are they suffering a lot right now during the COVID-19? Okay. Uh, maybe we should start first. I'm not saying I have the solution, but I think that if we can reimagine uh, the experience or the story that we're trying to tell and just, just try to go back, what is really ba? the way we do things. So we tell a story, but what we do is totally different, okay? So we say that food is a, rest, is a sorry, the restaurant is a food uh, business or that schools is an education business. But in reality, this is the practice. The restaurant, school, movie industry are actually all real estate business. You rent a table for 30 minutes to an hour to an hour and a half so that I can eat and enjoy the food that you want. Okay, I go here, I will rent this space. This space will be mine for the next an hour at least, okay? School's the same thing. I go to that place, okay? I will pay a tuition wherein within that space that I am occupying, I will be given education. Same thing with movies. I pay 200 pesos to buy a ticket so that for two, two and a half hours, I can enjoy watching the story of Avengers, okay? So in fact, actually, these are all following a real estate model, okay? You pay for, the people pay, uh, the audience or, or the students or, or uh, the customer, they pay for a certain uh, space that they can occupy to experience something, okay? So in fact, it is all a real estate business. If you say that food is a food, uh, sorry, that restaurants is a food business, then even if you don't have real estate, you should be able to give that experience uh, to, to the customer. Movies, for example, a lot of a lot of movie houses, even before COVID-19 happened, they're actually closing right now uh, or have closed down or a very, very poor attendance movie. In fact, a lot of you, I, I bet, you know, the last time you were inside a movie house would probably be 2019. You know? Most of the time, where are you getting your entertainment? You're not getting it from a movie house. You're not paying a space. You're paying time, uh, data, uh, internet so that you could get uh, a movie from Netflix okay so maybe instead of instead of relying on that story that is actually a real estate model a real estate story maybe we should reimagine the dining experience okay so that it will be dependent on real estate reimagine the education the learning experience so that it's not a it's not dependent on a physical space and time, of course. And the same thing with movie houses. I think movie houses, honestly, coming from, from the, the film industry for so, for so long, I think it's, you know, we should accept the possibility that it's, you know, it's, it's a person who's about to die soon, okay? So it's the dying industry. Wala nang nanonood ng sini. Wala nang nagbabayad ng ticket. Uh, to, to I, I'm not saying it's gonna it's not it's yeah uh, it's uh it's all dead and gone it's just it's dying uh there is a for example uh something that Moa is doing and uh, SM Pampango is doing right now they they're coming up with a drive-in movie experience uh which I think is again it is a story uh being told by somebody 
who is not a stakeholder because movies okay most of us watch movies because uh you know it's a social experience we want to be with people okay uh we most of the people most of the movie in, this is a fact the average filipino watches only one movie a year meaning they go to a movie house the average filipino all 10 million of them plus or whatever uh go to a movie house only once a year most of them do not have cars okay and if you go to watch a movie inside a uh, drive-in theater uh well one you're supposed to have a car two the ticket costs 400 pesos each okay so uh three if it's in whatever uh you need still need gasoline to 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 go to that place if it's in pampanga then you need to pay the toll as well so it's it's you know we it needs reimagination because they are locked in the story that movie watching is is going to the movie house maybe it should be reimagined like what are people actually doing now what are the stakeholders doing now what are the characters in that story of watching a film or being entertained is like that i would not be required to be in a car that i would not be required to travel far and have 400 dalawa kami and you know so 800 pesos na yan. okay that's how much in 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 somebody as a salary right now in the middle of the pandemic so it's important also to uh define uh reframe the mindset of how a storyteller or how you will tell the story of your industry or your story of your business or the story of your community so it's not enough that this is how we've been doing it for the past 50 years uh maybe it's time to re uh reimagine what the experience is like and see what is it really being what is being done right now uh or the practice has been like okay so going back sorry yeah the, the value of reimagining anyway uh it's also important to understand who are the characters uh and then us uh, so, you know in the storytelling industry the film industry we will always have a demographic. So oftentimes, eating the one advertising the demographic. You know, housewives, twenty-five to thirty-five years old, living in middle-income households, uh, etc., living in uh, Metro Manila or suburban Metro Manila. Okay, yun yung ano. But many people forget the two other most important important factors, uh, uh, important uh, personas, which is the psychographic. Okay, so what are the values, the beliefs? Uh, uh, I, I forgot what AIO stood for, but I is interest, uh, awareness, I don't know. Uh, Opin but, huh? Opinion. Attitude, interest, and opinion. Ah, sorry. Attitude, interest, <laughs> and what's O? Opinion, opinion. Opinion, that's correct. Yeah. And then lastly, something very, very crucial right now, which is the technographic. You know? How involved are they, not only on social media, but how involved are they with technology? Okay, because... If you know, if you do not go to a movie house right now, a physical movie house, but you know you you you're uh, you're an otaku, you know you subscribe to watching all the animes in in uh, anime uh, platforms, uh, or watch it, you know have subscriptions on Disney Plus and HBO and Netflix, then fine, uh, very interesting. Okay, so if, if this is these are touch points. Okay, uh, and these are the tools that we use. So it's important that we map the, the journey of, uh, this is an example of a journey map, a customer journey map uh, on digital, uh, digital marketing. No? Uh, at what point do, do they would consider uh, in everything that they do, for example, if they're uh, planning their wedding, okay? So how, at what point, uh, or what platforms or what websites do they use? Do they consider if they're planning a, a wedding? Okay. So uh, this is an example of a journey map that they that they go through. Uh, this is a uh, uh, another tool that I've developed. It's called the customer journey cards. Uh, these are the touch points, basically the platforms that you make that people will be aware or can be made aware 
of the stories that you're telling. Okay, so it's radio, television, print, online content. Okay, uh, people that made them consider your solutions. Uh, consider may, may would that would make them consider the solutions that you're presenting. Okay, so it could be search, email, website, social media, uh, other touch points, you know, that you could present uh, that that solution. So whether they uh, they call it the purchase space, no space, but it could be a website, a store, an actual store, uh, etc. Another thing that we use to to plot the story is called a rich picture. Uh, on the left is an example of what we did for. Uh, a fintech uh, grassroots uh, project uh, wherein we want to uh, uh, facilitate the loan experience. So if a person is, if a person wants to borrow a loan uh, from a bank, uh, what is what are the things that is happening right now, and how else can we try to solve it? Okay, so. It's a rich picture, just one picture, pero and daming elements. And then the one on the right is an example of a storyboard. Okay. So this is something I did for Beauty MNL. Uh, and the, if, you, if you're familiar with, uh, I hope you're familiar with, uh, with uh, Beauty MNL. Uh, it's one of the most successful online retailers uh, in the country right now. And uh, and they 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 made a big deal on under because most Filipinas or most people buying cosmetics, in fact, online the biggest category of online purchases are actually uh, uh, cosmetics, you know, beauty products. You know, the number one selling category in in online retail. And what they did is they realized that many Filipinas who are buying uh, beauty products are buying, are being sold, you know, they, the products are being sold to them from a very Western perspective or Western story, hindi nila story. So what Beauty MNL did is to retell the story of a Filipina who wants to look beautiful. So their definition of a beauty full person is not blonde, blue eyes, fair skin. Their, their definition is, you know, what a typical Filipina looks like. This is the, the, an example of the project that I, I did for them. Uh, it's uh, for Beauty, uh, Beauty MNL. I hope I play the sound. Obviously, you'd get that feeling factor. Well, um, my relationship is very, very serious. <laughs> Too serious. You know, I get so kilig. Like, parang, good morning, beautiful. I'm beautiful. Siguro yung mga simple gestures. Someone's there to look after you and your well-being. Ilan man yung abs niya, doesn't matter if he cannot hold a good conversation. So it's really appreciated. They take the time to really talk to you. Someone who I can talk to, yung nagpo yung conversation. I think someone who would compliment my personality. With it, someone like me na, they say masyado daw strong and maybe calm me down a little bit. I want a boyfriend that's bagay for my skin. Okay for me. <laughs> I don't know. Wow! <laughs> Not feel ko yon. Parang they always just arrive. They just show up the next day. Like magic. <laughs> it's just there. I think I found a boyfriend in BTM and L. I got so surprised, like all the brands are there and everything is accessible and it delivers straight to your house. The ease of the transaction, it has a cash and delivery uh, option. I really admire how Beauty Manila speaks to me. And I feel that a lot with the way I've been taken care of with Beauty Manila. So profound and so well thought of. Now, I know it's a small detail, Kunyari, mm, the emails. When you send emails, it's always hello beautiful, right? And you're like, oh yeah, thank you. I think it's the next day delivery. 
relaxing. <laughs> if I'm just trying to relax or de-stress, it's nice to just look at makeup or just to look at skincare and just keep scrolling and reading. And then from 7 p.m. yung pala 1 a.m. na. Kasi in Beauty Manila, you can check if their the girls can put in their profiles if they're morena, if they're light skin, if they're oily, combination. The excitement just, you know, builds up when the, the delivery guy texts me na ma'am, nandito na po ako. I have a relationship na nga with your rider, see? It's too weird. It's a shop. <laughs> I can relate Beauty Manel to love, not necessarily to boys. <laughs> Eventually, just like the dating scene and just like BMNL, it's going to offer the perfect fit for you. Online shopping is so much easier than dating. Okay. So after after this project, uh am expert na sa ano. No, it's uh, cosmetics. But something very important. Uh, I, I discovered because, like, most Filipinos, uh, a few years back, they only know about uh, Western or American beauty products, no? or partly a little bit of, ano, a little bit of uh, Japanese. But now, if you even go to a uh, SM store or an SM department store, you will realize, and even the mall near Benilde, no. Uh, mayroon isang section doon, isang store that only sells Korean uh, beauty products, so Korean cosmetics, no? Cosarex, mga ano. Uh, interesting because they, they, they try to bespoke the, or redesign the, the, the beauty product buying experience to the Asian beauty. Parang what it's not like what it's like to be a Caucasian, but what it's like to be an Asian, no? So the Filipino, uh, basically. Uh, and what we're trying to to achieve. No? So with that, anyway. Uh, so I just like to share with you uh, a number of uh, sorry. Uh, a number of uh, insights that uh, uh, I want to I want you to to remember uh, in telling a story to to change a community. A story is always a journey of a person. Okay, so a person is a representative of the people in a community, in a in a, in a, in a team, in a city, in a group, in an organization. The conflict of a story is the challenge that the person with the most uh, uh, to lose, must overcome, okay? Uh, so must overcome. The only person who should address the conflict is the one uh, with the most, uh, sorry, con is the, with the most at stake. And overcoming one challenge does not make a story. Because if you say tao, they would think that one, like for example, uh, to give a bad example, uh, white sands, no? Parang a white sand, is is a uh, is a challenge no na ano na, na overcome nila but it does not complete the whole story there's nothing wrong with white sand or maybe there is but but there's nothing really anything uh wrong i mean in a big deal on a major scale basis with with the white sand it's just that it does not really solve the problem because it did not look at the whole journey or the whole story and they did not consider solving the problem from the perspective of the stakeholders from the perspective of the characters of the story so uh overcoming just that one challenge you know making those rocks or you know making creating a beach uh is just one part of the story it does, does not make the whole story okay and then, storytelling is always about problem solving. It is a, a film that does not have a conflict, or even a story, I mean, a book, uh, a novel that does not have a, a short story, that does not have a conflict, uh, is not a story. It, it, it should always be about problem solving and how people overcome those problems, face those problems, and then 
uh, lastly get the rewards. Uh, these are a few things that uh, also I wanna lastly share with you. Identify with a challenge. Uh, know whose point of view is, be, is the story being told. Uh, know who is the bida in the story. Okay, so maybe the, who's the most. Who, kaya sa bida is, is she life in. It's from the word vida, meaning the life of the story. So she yung she yung pag namatay or some pag nawala. Okay, namatay. No, there's no more life. There's no more vida in the story. Okay, it's very important. Make the audience identify themselves with the vida. Uh, also, you know, understand cultural nuances in the story. And then use the tools, like mapping the journey, writing the script, and then choose the platform to tell a story. So, uh, I'd like to end this, uh, this wonderful afternoon uh, with you uh, by a quote from one of my favorite authors and storytellers. To survive, you must tell stories so whether you are a salesman you have to be able to tell a story if you are a teacher you have to be able to tell a story okay uh if you're a scientist you have to tell a story because the, that's the only way you will continue you will sur survive so with that uh i'd like to bring you back to abby uh thank you very much and uh that's it Wow. Yes. Mala, malakpak naman lahat. I, I think you can unmute yourself so we can hear some noise from others too. Thank you, Mark. Bravo! Bravo! <laughs>